The Theology of the Body and Humanae Vitae. On the 25th of July 1968, Pope Paul VI released his long-awaited and much-hyped encyclical Humanae Vitae, surprising the world by saying no to contraception. It is well known that this was not the end of the matter, however. Within a few days, the Catholic Herald ran with the headline, Birth Control Debate Grows, and the encyclical continues to be controversial and widely rejected. The reason is why. The so-called sexual revolution, which was well underway by the 1960s, has changed people's attitudes towards the purpose of their bodies. Margaret Sanger, one of the pioneers, said that no woman is free who does not own and control her own body, and the thinking behind this statement has influenced even those within the Church. The majority report of the Pontifical Commission on Birth Control set up to advise Pope Paul VI on this matter, based much of its proconception argument on the notion that it is natural to man to use his skill in order to put under human control what is given by physical nature. In reality, the idea that the goal of human knowledge is to gain mastery over nature is centuries old. The French philosopher Descartes believed in a radical distinction between the human person and the body. This Cartesian vision of the human person reduces the body to mere matter, which can then be regarded simply as a mechanism and an object for manipulation and exploitation. Professor Michael Waldstein has suggested that the main reason why so many people reject Catholic teaching in the area of sexual morality today is that the nature of sex has become invisible through these Cartesian glasses. Many Catholics continue to reject Humanae Vitae on the basis that our bodies are private things that we possess and can use as we see fit leading to the common refrain that the church should stay out of the bedroom. And yet it is clear to anyone wise to see that the promise of the sexual revolution has not been fulfilled. Women are now objectified as sex objects as never before. There is a crisis of family breakdown. The abortion race has rocketed and the sex has been cheapened almost beyond recognition. Against this backdrop, a growing number of Catholics are coming to realise that Blessed or St. John Paul II's theology of the body represents a moving, surprising, profound and intensely practical counterpoint because it affirms an integrated vision of the human person body and soul together. Accordingly, the fact that human beings are made in the image of God must apply to our bodies just as much to our souls. Our bodies are not just biological, but also theological, because they can tell us about God in whose image we are made. The Theology of the Body was expounded in 129 General Audience Addresses delivered by St. John Paul II between 1979 and 84, and throws modern secular ideas of love, sex, and even the meaning of life on their heads. It was envisaged as a comprehensive and definitive defense of Pope Paul VI's teaching on Humanae Vitae, but went far beyond this in scope and ambition. John Paul's biographer, George Weigel, has described this as a kind of theological time bomb set off to go off with dramatic consequences and one of the boldest reconfigurations of Catholic theology in centuries. 
John Paul II affirmed that our bodies are created in such a way that they carry within them a message calling us to live our lives as a gift. This he called the spousal meaning of the body. Crucially, all people are called to live spousally in some sense, including married people, those committed to celibacy, and all those in other circumstances. Each of us is called to give of ourselves completely, as Christ did, and this is what it means to be truly human. The spousal meaning of the body can be discerned in the language our bodies speak. Furthermore, the fact that our bodies call us to live spousally gives us a glimpse of the nature of God. We are created as spousal beings because God loves us spousally. Throughout the Old Testament we see references to God wanting to marry his people and finally he becomes completely one with them at the Incarnation. Christ's death on the cross is the supreme spousal act of history through which Christ also fully reveals man to himself. The teaching in Humana Vitae has that the sexual act has two intrinsic meanings, procreative and unitive, continues to be hard for people to grasp because the simple question arises, why is this so? The theology of the body answers this question by affirming that the sexual act is not a mere function outside of the person without meaning. Understanding the unitive and procreative meanings of sex is to read the language of the body in the truth, and this truth is the spousal meaning of the body. Sex, therefore, has a profound meaning as an expression of the whole human person. The theology of the body affirms a truly Christian, coherent and God-centred understanding of the human body and reveals a refreshingly positive way of understanding the Church's teaching in the areas of sexual morality. It contains many aspects that cannot be mentioned here, but nearly eight years after the death of its author, it is surely the case that his message is far more poignant and necessary forever. Thank you for listening and God bless you all.